grab your popcorn and snacks, find a comfy spot, take a seat or lie down, and let me transport you to a place of fantasy, ghost stories, ancient legends, odd creatures, alien encounters, and other magical topics. You may even decide to join the conversation. From faraway lands to your own backyard, with a small dash of pixie dust, turn out the lights and open your minds. The journey is about to begin. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to today's show. I'm Charlotte. I'll be your host for the next hour. I'm really glad you're all here. Um, wow, it's, 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 it, it's been a long week, but I'm looking forward to our guest, Matt McKay. He's, uh, uh, he lost someone, and uh, he's got some insight to tell us about what happens after you die, because he's kind of made contact. So I'm interested in hearing that since I lost my brother recently. My name, again, my name is Charlotte. I'll be your host for the next hour. I'm also the owner of the California Haunts Paranormal Investigation Team based out of Sacramento, California. Um, you can find us at www.californiahaunts.org. We're a nonprofit organization. We have 35 strong up and down the state of California. Plus, we have people in Oregon, Washington, Nevada, and Hawaii. Uh, the California Haunts Radio site can be found at www.californiahauntsradio.com. And that has all of our updated vi- our, our videos up to date. And you can also even go back into our archives, which go back a year and a half. I've also started to catalog everything we've done for 15 years on Blog Talk. So that's starting to come in. I've got a couple of years of that you, you can take a look at. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to let Matt uh, tell his story. And uh, here we go. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you, Charlotte? Good. Uh, please tell us about you. Uh, I'm uh, a clinical psychologist. I uh, teach in psychology in graduate school. I have a private practice. I work uh, primarily with clients who are struggling with trauma. Uh, co-director of um, the Bay Area Trauma Recovery Clinical Services. So I'm, um, I'm be- I've been very interested all my life in in trauma and how it shows up and and in particularly traumatic traumatic loss uh 13 years ago uh, my son who was then 23 uh died he was murdered and after his death uh i had this incredibly deep need to know two things. And I think this is true of anyone who's lost a loved one is, is first of all, is that, does that soul still exist? Uh Um, And are they okay? Those are the two things that just, I think, consume us when we are faced with losing someone we love dearly. So those were the things that absolutely haunted me, uh, those two questions. And I, and I set out to try to find answers. You know, I started, you know, consulting with mediums, uh, Felix Lerma, uh, Austin Wells. I made some contact uh, in that way with Jordan. <clears throat> but the problem with, I mean, I, I, mediums are wonderful. I have utmost mm-hmm. uh, respect, but, but the problem is it's a one-way conversation. You're, you're, you're hearing what, what that medium tells you they're hearing, but mm-hmm. you're not really able to, to engage with conversation and, and not able to hear the loved one yourself. So I continued to, to search and I, um, I met a psychologist named Alan Botkin who uh, discovered something called induced after death communication. And it uses uh, EMDR, eye movement uh, desensitization reprocessing, which is something I use all the time to treat a traumatic uh, loss and, and trauma. Uh, and so he made, in a, he made a, a little mistake in the protocol one day and, and suddenly the person he was working with had a full on um, vision. He could hear, he could feel this, this loved one that he had lost. Mm-hmm. And it was an extraordinary experience and Botkin didn't know what to make of it. Uh, he was working at the VA, he did a big study uh, with uh, 80, I think 83 people who had had a traumatic loss, who lost a loved one. Uh, he didn't tell them what to expect. They just were coming for treat, treating trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he used this this very uh, this modification in the protocol, and 81 of them actually had an induced after death communication experience. They actually saw or heard or both their loved one. So I went to see Botkin, and 
I was fortunate to have that experience. I literally heard Jordan. He was, he was there. He was talking to me, not inside my head, but he was talking to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard his voice and he said the things, of course, that I needed to hear that he, he, he was still, still there. He's still, he's watching over us and he loves us. And so that was, uh, and he's good and he's, and he's a good place. So those are the things that just were so, so vitally important for me to, to know. And, and yet there was still something missing. Mm -hmm. And that was my ability to, to engage, to ask him questions, to, to, to talk to him. Uh, I was just a kind of a passive recipient uh, of communication for him. So I, I, consulted uh, a well-known psychologist, the late Ralph Metzner, who's kind of a specialist in after-death communication. And he taught me how to do channeling. And um, it, it you, I think it, it took him about 10 minutes to teach me how to do it. I went home that, that first day and I, I had this incredible experience of being able to talk to Jordan, have, have not just you know, passively waiting for something, but but to be able to ask questions and hear him respond, have him respond, and 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 so the channeling experience changed everything for me because now I I could have real conversations with my son, mm -hmm. um, and over the years we've had thousands of conversations, um, and he's uh, at, at times decided that he wants to use our conversations to help others. Uh, and more recently, he decided he wanted to write a book that focused on uh, on what happens after we die. It, 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 it explains and shows what to expect in death and also to help with the fear of death, which is something that, uh, you know, something like 80 percent of people have some significant fear of death. And mm -hmm. and he felt that this was something that he, he could offer some real help to folks who were still incarnate, still living in bodies and facing uh, the uncertainty and the, uh, of, of, of life. Well, this is interesting. And, you know, like you say, this is, <clears throat> this is something that, that, that a lot of people are interested in, you know, because you, you always wonder what happens. So um, as you started to delve into this, you, uh, did you have more communication with your son? Yeah, we would basically we'd schedule a conversation at least once a week. And uh, to my surprise, uh, he, you know, he would decide it, it, it was he it was his decision that he wanted to work on a book and and mm -hmm. um, and he basically outlined the book in about I think less than five minutes. Okay, here, here are all the chapters. Here's what, here's what's going to be in the book, and then over the course of about a year, um, he he went through every part of what he had planned, and and turned it into a, a, a manuscript. And essentially, I was the scribe. I'm I'm just writing down what he's telling me. Now I I, I get to ask questions and I explore things with him, but but what he's but all of this information is coming from him. It's not from me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what type of information did you get? I mean, you know, did, did he describe what, what it was like for him on, on the other side or, or the transition yeah. or? Yeah, he does. And so, I mean, I guess that maybe just to talk about, you know, the sort of the steps of what we, what we kind of, sure. you know, sure. uh, he says that, um, you know, the, the first step, you know, it's at the point where we become discarnate, where we, where we leave our body, mm -hmm. there's often a period of confusion. Sometimes we don't even know we're dead. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we're caught up in a lot of the emotional turmoil that, 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 that surrounded our demise. Uh, and sometimes we're very, very closely attached to issues and dramas and, that are going on in our lives. So some people really do linger a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, after their death, and and these are these are the souls that we sort of encounter as ghosts. Uh, uh -huh. They ha they haven't really been ready uh, to transition to the spirit world. They're still working on something that, and they're still very attached to the physical environment, the 
and perhaps the, the people that they are involved with. And they're often in some sort of struggle with those people. And so they're in the middle of a drama and they are reluctant to leave. So these are these are folks that are are oftentimes that we encounter as 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 you know these these spirits that are haunting certain environments. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, uh, souls fairly quickly begin to move toward the afterlife. And, and the first stop is, it, it was what Jordan calls the landing place. Uh -huh. And uh, the landing place, and of course, here's, a, I mean, the, the situation for us as, 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 as souls who are just after death is that we've lost our senses, we, our nervous system, uh, all, all the things that are familiar that anchor, anchor us uh, to, to life are, are suddenly gone. We can see in all directions, uh, we move by intention, but not by moving our legs. We hear telepathy. Everything is different. And so mm -hmm. the landing place is, a, is where we actually have to adjust to all of these differences. And the landing place, he says, is, con is constructed with energy. It's, okay. it's, not re it's not physical, but what we see is energetic. And often it's, it's, it's a little bit surreal, like the colors are a little brighter <laughs> than you expect. And... Um, but the images in that landing place are designed to kind of soothe and comfort us. Uh, oftentimes the images are borrowed from our home planet, wherever, whichever planet we incarnate on the, we see things that are, are familiar to us in the landing place. Um, but there is a problem that, that we often encounter there. And the, one is that now we're, we're, we're not confined by a body and whatever we think, whatever we imagine, actually starts to take an energetic form. We can actually hallucinate uh, whatever we imagine. And Jordan described his own experience when he first got to the landing place where, you know, he, he you know, whatever he thought, whatever he thought about would, would, would seem to take form. Um, and he sort of tried to calm himself by thinking, uh, well, for example, he thought about the house he grew up in. Suddenly he can see the house, it's, it's there. Um, he's, he, and, and so to calm himself, he began to think about where, where he felt safest and happiest, which was Yosemite. So he, see, he sees Yosemite, but then he thinks about an elephant. Now he sees an elephant in Yosemite. And then he, and uh, you, you get, you kind of get what I mean. It, right, it, right, right, right. Whatever you think, and particularly if you, if you show up in the landing place with a lot of fear and you have these, these scary images in your mind, that's what you tend to see. And, and if you expect to see religious figures, if you expect to see Jesus, or you expect to see, Muhammad or whoever you're expecting to see, you tend to hallucinate that. <clears throat> and so the landing place is kind of tough because we have to kind of learn, uh, Jordan says, to listen to love. Because as soon as we get there, there are guides. Oftentimes mm -hmm. there are loved ones who, who oh, many times have crossed over to the other side. They're, they're, they come to greet us. So they're, they're, we're surrounded by, by love and guidance, except sometimes we're so preoccupied with what's what we're mentally projecting that we can't hear or or, or get that the support is there and so we're, we're kind of for a little while deaf to love and this is another thing that happens is if we show up with a lot of emotion a lot of anger a lot of fear um, <clears throat> a lot of um, despair and sadness um, oftentimes that emotion kind of deafens us for a little while uh -huh. to the love that, that's being communicated and the care and the support that we're getting. So it takes a little while sometimes for souls uh, to make that adjustment. And souls who are really struggling uh, in the landing place oftentimes go, go to a, a certain bardos, healing bardos, where, uh, where additional support and uh, energetic transformation of the soul takes place, where they, where they have guides to really support and help them uh, deal with intense emotions and other uh, experiences that they can't get into the spirit world with. You can't get into the spirit world with a lot of anger. You can't uh -huh. get into the spirit world consumed with fear. So those things have to be resolved in the landing place or in the healing place or in some of these healing bardos uh, adjacent to the spirit world before the soul is ready to kind of make it into that that environment so that, that's the that's the first stop is, is uh -huh. landing place and sometimes a, a healing place that's associated with that is is where we we begin our journey very interesting i've never heard of this this is fantastic 
Yeah, you know, because you always hear that you know where they get stuck in like a, 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 a another re- another region sometimes, but I've never heard of the, the, the direct healing place. Yeah, well, the nether regions are the, are healing bardas. For example, okay. let, let's say a, a soul is con- consumed with needs for revenge, mm-hmm. uh, and they show up in the landing place, or the, and it, and they're 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 st- so dominated by these feelings. And by the, you know somehow needing to enact uh, some uh, some kind of harm to others, uh, that they have to go to special bardos that actually are created for them, and they, they, where they literally create scenarios where that soul gets to uh, exposed to whatever it is that they're struggling with, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 they're slowly able to resolve these issues. Uh, so these are. At, uh, they're healing places, but they're also places of additional teaching and learning to mm-hmm. get the soul ready to enter the spirit world. So, so those bardos that we sometimes hear about in the Egyptian and uh, uh, Tibetan books of the dead and so forth are really not the places where people are exiled and, and suffering. They're mm-hmm. pl- places where we heal and do the necessary work to get ready to fully enter the spirit world. And I don't know if you know this, but... Uh, how long can it take before somebody heal? I guess it depends on the person and, and what baggage they're carrying. You know, that's right. And, um, and so of course time is measured differently in, in spirit world than mm-hmm. it is here. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of quote time could pass, like a lot of events could be happening in the Bardos or in the healing place uh, that we might measure in, in a matter of seconds or minutes here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so time is different there, but, but, but you, I think you're absolutely right that the more work the person has to do, uh, the, the, the more healing and adjusting and resolving of, uh, issues that are left over from the just completed life, mm-hmm. the more of that there is, the longer it takes and the more work that has to be done to get the soul ready to finally fully enter and matriculate into the spirit world proper. Now, once they get in, they've, they've you know, gone through whatever the adjustment at the landing place is. Once they get in and, and now they're, they're, they're able to hear and experience love because love is how everything is communicated in mm-hmm. the spirit world. It's you know, like here on earth, when we talk, uh, we, we make air molecules vibrate and, and, and that creates sound. Well, it's love is the equivalent of the air molecules on earth. It's, it's, it's the w- way that all communication occurs through the medium of love. So if you don't hear love and you're not sensitive and you can't get it and you're not a lot in not letting it in, you, you, you're deaf in the spirit world. So that's why people have to kind of get ready to get into the spirit world. They have to be attuned to love, be able to hear and listen and get what loving messages are being sent to them. Now, having reached that point, they get into the spirit world and there are a number of important things that's happened there. Almost invariably, uh, soon after reaching the spirit world, Jordan tells me that uh, we go through a period of um, life review. Mm-hmm. And, and souls t- typically experience this as a kind of a reverie. Uh, almost a meditation, and 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 it's usually uh, assisted by guides who help us look back over our entire last existence, our our last life, mm-hmm. um, and and this is sometimes extraordinarily challenging because if you, if if we've lived a life in which, for example, we've done a lot of damage to other people, and 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 a lot of hurt. Um, what happens during the life review is we experience all of the things that we did, but not just we experience them as, as we, as the actor doing that, but mm-hmm. we experience it as the other person felt and experienced oh. whatever we did. And we feel that simultaneously. And not only do we feel it as that person experienced it at the moment, but we also feel the ongoing consequences over time of what that particular act. You know, so if a father slaps his son, um, okay, so, in the life review, he's going to experience what that felt like for his son, uh-huh. uh, but also what that slap did over time in terms of how the son under, felt about it himself, uh, what what this, the levels of trust the son was able to have in relationships, uh, what, what kind of 
what kind of self-esteem that that young man had and, and over time. So now in the life review, that's part of everything that we see and, and know. Every single thing we do, we know how it affects the other person. We can feel it and not just then, but over time. So it's a very powerful experience. Um, and, and, and it's not punishment. It's not like there's blame. There's no blame. There's no um, guilt. There's no um, pu- uh, accusations, uh, no judgment in the, in the spirit world. It's all love. But it's also important that we have to, we have to face and come to terms with who we were and what we did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's done without judgment or attack, but it's absolutely necessary. It's, it's, it's part of our work. So that's the next step. The very usually the very nearly the first thing you do as you get into spirit world is go through that that review process. Coming from the fact that you're a man of science, I mean this this has a lot of credence because I mean you know normally and I don't want to put psychic stuff because I you know I, I utilize them on my team of course, but normally that's that that's your only source for this stuff. But because you because you have a scientific background, I mean. How did your brain wrap around all this, having that scientific background? Okay, well, <clears throat> that's a really important question. And um, I, I guess there, there are a couple of things that probably are worth mentioning here. Um, w- one is the work of uh, Michael Newton, who mm-hmm. uh, wrote uh, Journey of Souls and uh, Destiny of Souls. And he's a, psych- was a psychologist who, uh, and, a, and a behavioral psychologist like myself, and, and also a, a hypnotherapist. And he discovered a way of regressing people to a past life and then bouncing them out of the past life into the life between lives. What, you know, and, and, and it, so he discovered a, 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 a th- he discovered or what to expect and what happened was that almost all these seven thousand people described the same basic uh, environment in the afterlife i mean it, it, it was profound and if most of them for example describe a um a, a place of uh, of evaluation of, of uh you know a um you know what we, what we were just talking about where we a life review it, you know so the thing is that all of these people spontaneously describe something uh, and so that has a, to me, that, that, that means a lot. Scientifically, it means that if people unbidden all kind of describe the same thing, um, that's powerful evidence that, that it, it, it exists to some extent. So that's one thing that really impressed me is Newton's work uh, and, and, gives, and corroborates a lot of the things that Jordan says. Uh, there's some other things that probably might be worth talking about. Um, the work of a guy named uh, Ian Stevenson in uh, University of Virginia, uh, and he studied um, children who remember past lives, and um, he did he he, he uh, all over the world. He traveled all over the world interviewing these children who would remember past lives, and uh, he did over three thousand of them. And in almost a third of the cases, almost a thousand cases, he was able to solve who they were in that previous incarnation and actually identify who that child had been. And mm-hmm. he was able to go to, for example, to the original family and, and confirm uh, the names and all of the stuff that the, the child would talk about, he could confirm. So it's really powerful, it's in my view, scientific evidence for reincarnation. Mm-hmm. So we know some things. We know that... Um, the soul can leave the body uh, uh-huh. because of near-death experiences and people can um, can see and understand things that they couldn't possibly know if they were still in their, their consciousness was still rooted in their body. Sure. So we know the soul can leave the body. We know the souls can go into another body because of Ian Stevenson's re- research because we know there's a really good chance there's reincarnation. Uh-huh. And because of Michael Newton, we know that we know something about what happens between lives. So all of these things to me are very meaningful and 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 have have some real scientific value. So so that's how I would kind of go about asking that question. Is is there a role for science? Yes, there's a role for science. Uh, and by the way, there, there's a, 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 some interesting scientific studies now that are being done at um, 
Institute of Noetic Sciences on channeling. And mm -hmm. we can actually test to see if channelers are getting accurate information uh, from the other side. So fascinating stuff. So yes, uh, there's a place for science and I, th and I'm, I find a, a lot of, to me, uh, uh, very provocative scientific evidence that mm -hmm. there is an afterlife. This is, I mean, this is incredible. Um, so now once they go through the review, what's the next steps beyond that then? Okay, so the, the next step usually uh, is the, the soul will make their way to their, their soul group. And I, I think a lot has been said about soul groups. Um, Michael Newton had a lot to say about it in, in his work. Um, Jordan describes them as little families uh, and they usually have somewhere between seven and 20, six, or tw six and 20 souls in this one little family. Now you could, you could think about it like, you know, a soul group lives in a house and then they have a next door neighbor and there's another soul group that's, that's kind of very close and closely related and, and down the block, there's some other soul groups. And so there are a lot of soul groups that sort of interconnect and interrelate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then of course, you know, the soul groups that are across town, you probably wouldn't, wouldn't know them except in rare cases, soul groups in other towns you wouldn't know. Uh, so so there's, there's a vast number of soul groups uh, we we know a few of them that are that are close by or or have individuals who we've shared pre previous lives with and we're we're connected through that in, that individual soul. So the soul group, uh, it it's basically a classroom. It not, it's not literally a classroom, but it's it's a place where souls learn. And most of the soul groups have um, guides that are assisting them, essentially functioning as teachers. Um, and the soul groups do, do a lot of learning activities. They have a lot of fun too, um, but they're, they're doing a lot of learning activities uh, together. And so, and, and in fact, that's really all, a lot of what happens in the afterlife is there's an awful lot of learning going on. Of course, we, we come to this world to learn as well. We, we, we mm -hmm. incarnate and, and with, with a lesson plan. There are things that we could come here to learn. Uh, and, and we come here to a physical world because there are some things that you can't learn uh, in the spirit world. Uh, there the things you come to the earth that uh, only can be learned on earth. I mean, for example, love is very uh -huh. easy in the spirit world. It's just, the whole environment is love. Love is, is, is transparent, beautiful, and easy. So we have to come to a physical environment to learn how to love in the face of pain, to learn how to love in the face of difficulty and friction and 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 various kinds of struggles, how do you love in in the face of all of that? So we, we have to come to a physical environment for that kind of learning. But on the other hand, there's a lot that we are learning in the afterlife. There's a lot in the spirit world that we do there um, around learning. I mean, I, I don't know. If, I mean, you you want me to tell you uh, talk a little bit about that? Or? Sure, go ahead. Okay, so. Um, for one thing, uh, we can see from the spirit world the entire human history in the Akashic record. Um, so we can see uh, how how things change, both for individuals, but also, you know, in, in terms of you know large groups of people. How do how do they change? What what are the laws? It's called the laws of change, the laws of mass evolution. We can we can watch how consciousness evolves from the spirit world because we have the Akashic record there. The Akashic record, we could look at any time in history. We can open the record in the future, in the past. We can see all of history. And a lot, there's a lot of study uh, of, of, the, of the Akashic record that's done by souls and, and spirit. Um, but there's a lot of other things they do. For example, uh, they can look at the history of any planet where souls incarnate there. So, you know, you, know, you and I incarnate on earth. Uh, but we could, in the spirit world, get interested in what happens in other planets where souls incarnate, and how, how are they different, and what, how do souls uh, learn and evolve differently on, in those other environments? So we, we could we could learn about that. Uh, there's something called you know spiritual tourism, where uh, souls can can actually go to planets as discarnates and uh, as as entities, and and just watch and observe what what's happening there. Um, um, another thing that's really cool 
is we can actually learn by changing history. So we can, we can actually create alternate timelines in the Akashic record. We might have a situation where someone decides to do X instead of Y. And then we can watch the Akashic record, how, how things change as a result of that one decision. Like, let's like go back to that example of the dad slapping his son. So maybe we could study a record in, in which the father doesn't slap his son. And what happens then? And, and how does his son turn out differently and feel differently and act differently? Um, so you, you see what I'm saying? So each, each decision, we can actually look at if that, had, if that had gone differently and we can watch the entire thing progress, like, like reading the chapters in a book. And then, and then at some point, we just close up the Kashuk record and all that we saw just becomes a, a potential, not, not real. It's, it's, it's just something that we can observe to see how things turn out if we act differently. So it's a very powerful form of lessons and learning that takes place by looking at these alternative timelines and alternative histories. There's also, we, we learn in the afterlife, in the spirit world by, by merging with all, with, with we, we want to call it with God, with collective consciousness, uh, all it is, however, however you want to, you know, define it. Right. Um, souls can actually merge for brief, fairly brief periods of time and get big downloads of knowledge and experience uh, from the merging. But it's kind of challenging because when you merge with all, it's like, it's like running a big uh, load of, of uh, electricity through a little wire. And, and it's, oh, we can only take it for so long before it gets too hot. It's just, it's, it's too overwhelming. We, we just end up, you know, kind of getting um, this inpouring of experience. Mm -hmm. More experienced souls can do more focused inquiries as they more merge with all. But so that's, that's another big way that we learn in the afterlife is, is, is kind of merging with other, the, the larger consciousness, the collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. Very powerful stuff. Um, another thing we do is learn to create. Uh, souls do a lot of creating. Uh, they, and that, that involves creating music and creating, creating scenarios and stories. They literally create things. They can learn to create objects and, uh, and so forth. And, 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 and one other thing maybe that's worth mentioning is there are a lot of spiritual careers that we develop. So when we go to the afterlife, we're not just sitting around. Uh, many cases, we're developing skills mm -hmm. that we, we use in our spiritual careers. They're not, not so much things we use on earth, but things in, in spiritual careers, like um, these careers could include being a healer or a guide or a teacher or someone who creates. Um, so th these careers are uh, things that we get better and better and better at. And, and after a while, we do less incarnating and we spend more time with our spiritual careers. This is, uh, yeah, uh, this is fabulous. Um, so what, okay, well, once you get through all that, what's the next step then? Because like, like you said, there's, there's different steps to get to where you need to be. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one guidance that we get from uh, guides and, um, and souls that are a little further developed, more, more developed than, than we might be. Um, but there's, there's also, there's a lot of fun in the afterlife. The, the souls gather together. It's, it, I mean, honestly, it's, it's sort of like being in college. You know, there's a lot, you spend a lot of time in, in classwork and learning stuff, but you know, you're, you're, you're going to parties, you're letting it rip, you're, 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 you know, you're, you're playing your guitar. I'm making this up, but, but in fact, that's kind of, um, the afterlife is a little bit like that. There's a lot of learning, a lot of, a lot of really important stuff that we're doing and, and in terms of growing as, as souls, but we're also having a lot of fun. There's a lot of creativity, a lot of, uh, in, enjoyment of each other. Um, there's also, the, there's a certain amount of merging that goes on in the afterlife that's not just with the, with, with, with all or uh, with God, but we can merge with each other. And it's kind of like the spiritual equivalent of sex. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a way where, where souls can literally kind of enter each other and, and fully know and experience each other. And, and, and there's a very deep kind of love that, that they experience when, when they were in one or two or three souls merge together in this way and so that's another activity in the afterlife mm -hmm. and it's a very very beautiful experience 
So there's a lot that we're doing there, uh, both both fun, mm -hmm. uh, creative, and and a lot of learning that's going on. And um, uh, and sometimes we have projects. Sometimes souls have projects where they where they're developing energetic uh, images that that are either beautiful or in some way useful to them. So there there are these things that also occur. Now at a certain point though. Um, souls start to get ready um, to incarnate again. Mm -hmm. And there is there is a whole a whole process around that. Um, and souls get ready to incarnate at different rates. Some souls need a lot of um, recovery time uh, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of time to grow and, um, and heal mm -hmm. uh, in, in the spirit world. And other souls are kind of raring to get back uh, to another challenging life. Um, so, uh, so some souls are uh, reincarnate fairly frequently, uh, and and others are more cautious. And some and 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 some souls are are actually very reluctant to incarnate and may and may go for long periods between attempting another life. Uh, so um, as a soul kind of approaches that point where it, they feel ready to incarnate and they want, they want to do more learning in a physical environment with the challenges in that environment and the challenges of a physical body. Um, and also to be tr truthful, souls in many cases yearn for and miss some of the aspects of physical life. I mean, there's certainly a lot of pain in this place and Earth, by the way, is generally considered a very difficult place to incarnate. There are other yeah. worlds and planets that are much easier to live on. Um, so we, we have a very challenging planet here. Um, but souls miss it. They miss the, the beauty and the, and the, and the, and the environment. They, they, and they sometimes miss aspects of having a physical body. Um, uh, they miss sexuality. Uh, they, uh, they, they miss the struggle that, that we have to face as, as we grow and develop in our lives. Mm -hmm. Um, so at some point, souls generally start moving toward another, another life. And there's a whole process where souls get to, with guides and with help is called the, the ring of life. They, they get to actually view a number of live possible lives that they could enter and they and they usually are offered several kind of gradations of difficulty you know so a life that's you know very very challenging there's a lot right. to learn and this, and and souls want to learn and they want and they want to come to earth and challenge and, and have challenging lives uh, but you know and then some somewhat less challenging lives and souls kind of have an opportunity to, to decide, you know, kind of what they're up for. So they're offered a number of opportunities and they actually get to look into the Akashic record and see some of the likely things that'll happen in that life, how long that life might last, what kind of liabilities or difficulties that particular body might have or that particular uh -huh. family or uh, environment. So, so they get a little sense of what, what to expect with that life as they face that choice. Now, I've read accounts from different people and like you say, they, they make a choice to what life they, they, they want to go back into. Um, are they around? I mean, like, like your son, for instance, you know, if, if he has made that choice, can they come back around you once they've made that choice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's already incarnated. He's a, a female, and uh, uh, and uh, living in a very kind of different cultural environment than uh -huh. he had uh, uh, in in his life as Jordan. Uh, but you see, I think you've raised something. I think that's really important. You know, so you know what happens when souls incarnate? Is you know, so uh, in in fact, part of our soul energy always stays. In the afterlife it always stays in the spirit world so and part of our soul energy can then enter a physical body and a physical environment so so part of our soul is always in the soul group always in the afterlife 
uh, and and the soul group is intact there. Uh, uh, even though many of them may be incarnating at any given time, some of their energy remains and they, they all remain connected. And so Jordan, even though, you know, some of his energy now lives in, in, in the body of a, of a young woman, uh, he is also uh, able to communicate to me just as he did before incarnating again, because part of his energy always remains in the afterlife and, his, and our relationship continues. Our relationship continues absolutely without interruption. There's, there's no, nothing can change that. And he tells me that over and over again. And, he, and she says, probably one of the most important things that he wants people to know is that um, we're always together. <laughs> we, the living and the dead, the people that we love, we are always together with them, even though we have this illusion of aloneness here on this earth. Mm -hmm. um, but the living and the dead, remain together. The love is inviolate. It never ends. It doesn't stop. So anybody who's on the other side, they, they are still connected to you. They still love you and, and you still love them and their, and their existence continues and their love and concern for you continues. And often in many cases, they will continue to, to guide you and support you. If you listen, if, if mm -hmm. you, open the channel and, and really try to listen to them. So th that love is always there and we're always united with, with all of the people we've ever loved, living and dead, we're always united in love. So that's something that he really wants to convey and, and he's been so clear about that with me. That, and, that, and that this idea that we're alone and when people die, they're gone, this is just not true. Um, maybe just one other thing while, while I'm talking about this. Sure. The, this idea that, you know, after you die, you could go to hell or you could go to some god awful place and get cut off from all, all, all of humanity and all, all those other souls and cut, oh. cut off from God. That's just not true. It's just not the way it works. And, um, you know, there's, there's almost no medium who, who has discovered a, a hell. There's a, nobody's, nobody's seeing that. Nobody's hearing about that. Uh, uh, you know, Michael Newton and all of his work with the 7,000 people that hypnotized, they, they didn't encounter any hell in the afterlife ever. There's no suffering, no punishment. And so this kind of Christian idea is that we're going to be judged and evaluated and, and, and we either are saved or we're lost and damned just isn't true. So we stay together. We're, we're, we all stay connected and no one is cast out, no one is damned, no one is pushed out of the spirit world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not true. What does he say, um, you know, what, what, <clears throat> what was he's crossed over over there? Can they create their own reality? As far as we're, we're <clears throat> you know, I mean, people, you know, it's like you go, God, my throat, you go back to the Christian stuff where, <clears throat> the angels are on clouds and all this. What's it like physically over, you know, for them physically over there? Yeah. Well, th I th I'm really glad you're asking that question. It seems very important. Um, souls can create their own reality to some extent. Mm -hmm. For example, in his soul group, they have collectively agreed to live in an old Victorian house. Okay. Now um, that's, it's kind of, a, and they call it the farm. It's, it looks like a canola, like an old Victorian farmhouse. And they collectively create that image mm -hmm. and, and they can relate to it. They can, they can experience themselves as inside the rooms of that house and uh, occupying uh, areas there and moving around inside the house. So they can create an image and enjoy it. Um, and it, it could be comforting. It could be something that teaches them things. Mm -hmm. um, so, Yes, um, we can create a lot, and, and souls that are more advanced uh, can create more complex realities. Now, these are things that are, by and large, made out of energy. They're not made out of matter. Uh, so they're not electrons and neutrons and protons. They're, 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 they're energy forms. Um, so as such, they have somewhat different properties uh, than things the you know, things that we hard surfaces that we touch on earth but still souls can relate to them as 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 literal objects um souls if they want can make a statue 
you know, can, can, can make a painting mm -hmm. and, and they do it out of energy, not out of canvas and oil, but, mm -hmm. but yet uh, these things are, can be created and they can sustain them. They, they can hold on to an image and they can, uh, they can create what looks like a, a big temple and, and other souls can agree that, that yes, we're, that's, that's what that is and, and agree on, on that energy formation. <clears throat> and that could, that could go on for a long time uh, mm -hmm. just by that agreement. Uh, so yes, they can create things. And that's why I said earlier at the landing place, it's kind of dangerous because we arrive there and what's in our mind, suddenly we can project uh, energetically and see really scary stuff. Uh, and until we learn to kind of control that, um, it, it, it can be a little disconcerting to say the least that, you know, you, you think about, um, you know, for example, let's say you were being chased by the police when you passed away. And, mm -hmm. um, or in Jordan's case, he was literally in a, in a, in a fight of his life with, with men who were who ultimately shot and killed him. Well, you can show up in the afterworld and you can be seeing that stuff. You can, you can, you, 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 you can bring those images and projections with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it takes a little time sometimes to, to, for that to fade out and for the, the soul to kind of recognize, oh, wait a minute, I'm not in that environment anymore, uh, and and begin to listen to the guidance and support of the loved ones around. So yeah, so that could that could in the beginning that could be a real challenge. But once souls you know master the capacity to create energetic images, they do it a lot and they really enjoy it. It's understandable, though, like like in your son's case, because that was the last thing he experienced. So that's what's going to be imprinted on his mind. Yeah. So yes, and he showed up in the in the in the, the landing place with a lot of concern about danger, mm -hmm. and and so it, it took a little while for him to kind of settle down and be able to hear the support of guides and loved ones that were there, because he he arrived in this in a state of alarm. Yeah, and I mean that's you're right, exactly right. Right. Did they ever catch the people that did it? No, although. Uh, the uh, police inspector basically claims that they know who did it. Uh, that person mm -hmm. is in jail for another crime. Uh, they're not on the street anymore. Uh, there, there, there were four people who attacked him, but one was the shooter, and and they believe that the the shooter is incarcerated. Um, but they've never been able to convict anyone of of that crime. Okay. And no, Jordan says that no. doesn't matter. That's the other thing that's interesting. Right. That's worth saying. It's like he says, "Look, this is all being handled karmically. You know, these these people are learning from their acts. Uh, I was expected to have a short life uh, for a many a number of different reasons. I had I had a reason to come for this life. I I yeah. fulfilled that reason. Uh, and and you know, justice is not the issue here for these people." Um, it's karma. They're going to learn from this, as we all learn from everything we do and every mistake we make. We learn, and uh, so it's not about it's not about punishment. It's about learning, and that, and he assures me that they are learning and have learned from this experience, and and from his point of view, that's all that's important. So is that the key? Because you you, you hear that all the time, even in movies sometimes. You know about you know every, every time you pass away the idea is to go to, to a life where you can improve yourself so technically you know even if you pick a life with struggles it's going to improve you and improve your soul in some way exactly and that's why people choose very difficult life so sometimes people and, and souls choose a life for example in which they're intellectually challenged they have some some sort of brain damage or they have some some physical uh, mm -hmm. uh, struggle that uh, that they have to cope with in their lives and might shorten their lives. They choose those lives because their lives because these are opportunities for great learning. And uh, and sometimes they choose a life that's directly related to lessons that they failed to learn in their last life. And karma is really just finishing your lesson. It's not about punishment. You know, you did this. Now we're going to punish you. Mm -hmm. It's about you know you didn't quite learn this lesson yet, so we're going to have to create an environment in which you have another opportunity to learn that lesson. Uh, and so we come back often and we find ourselves needing to live in environments and situations that are that we failed to meet that challenge in some previous life. 
uh, you know, I mean, a silly example would be somebody, um, you know, who just didn't have any empathy or concern for for people who uh, struggled with with physical illness. Right. And and they may come back in another life, not for punishment's sake, but in a body that has significant uh, chronic illness as a way of learning about what that's like from the inside. So it's, it's a lesson, not a punishment. Okay. Okay. And the other question I have is, is do they do do they still you know once they get past this first step do they still have concerns for us here on here on this plane absolutely their love for us is absolutely continuous they don't forget us they often spend time observing us uh so and and they they will send messages to us they'll send messages via dreams or just a thought shows up in your mind because they're communicating telepathically and i mean we've all had this experience where suddenly you kind of have this thought that shows up in your mind you think god yeah uh sort of a different way of looking at the thing or maybe i shouldn't do that maybe i mm -hmm. let me think and they they are able to communicate to us telepathically and the more we open to them you know one of the things ralph messer taught me is that those people that we love on the other side are just a thought away as soon as you think about them you open the channel you open the channel and they can start to communicate to you. So being receptive, being interested in hearing from them, letting letting your, you know, asking questions and then seeing what shows up in your mind. Everybody can channel. It doesn't require any special skill. You don't have to be clairaudient or anything. I'm not, I can tell you for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't have any of those abilities. But when I ask Jordan questions, I I can experience him answering those questions and I write down his answers. And and they and they're different than what I would think, and they're he's saying things that I would never think or imagine, and and, and so I'm I'm learning from him all the time. But but anyone can communicate to the loved ones on the other side simply by opening the channel, thinking about them, sending them love, and you can ask them questions, and and they will answer. So I just yes, they are they they love us. They will never stop loving us. They never stop caring about us. And they will support and help us if we ask for. When you first started communicating with him, how did you verify it was him? Yes. Well, <clears throat> there's different different ways to answer that. First of all, I have a physical sensation that occurs when I'm channeling. Uh, <clears throat> that's very significant. I mean, I, I, I my body feels different. Um, mm -hmm when he's present and uh, and and it, and it and it starts really at the top of my head and I can feel uh, a, 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 a physical experience that goes all the way down my spine. So my body is altered by the experience and I'm, I'm oh. attuned to that and I'm aware of that. So that's one way I'm, I'm sort of aware that something is, 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 is the channel is opening. Um, but the other thing is that it's how he talks he doesn't talk like me <laughs> he talks like him uh and so there is his style is his use of language um and also he has knowledge that i don't have and mm -hmm. so he's saying things that blow my mind you know it's like what you know is that right i mean like right now he's, do, he's on this whole thing about talking about what the nature of reality and he's, he's into quantum physics and all kinds of stuff i don't know anything about that and and so and and he's and he's talking about the relationship between matter and energy and so forth and i'm like okay you know <laughs> but i'm i know that this is not coming from me right um, and so um his style of speech uh and his um uh, his style of communicating and what he tells me are all things that are surprising and feel distinctly him not me okay okay What's one of the most uh, important messages that he's given you? Well, I, 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 I think the two things that are most important that I, that I sort of hold on to is this thing that there's no judgment. There is no judgment in the afterlife. We're, we're not bad. There's no good and bad. There's just learning. And we learn by making mistakes and screwing up and it, and so there's no judgment about that that's what we're here to do we're here to learn and 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 of course that learning involves all kinds of things that don't go well 
And we learn from all the outcomes. That's, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that we've, we've got to let go of good, bad, and, and, just, and just be accepting that we're here to learn. And also that the pain is an inevitable part of life and it's an important part of our learning. You can't learn without pain. When, 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 when you do X and then some, something painful happens, that's teaching you something. That's, and that, that's a really, really important lesson. So there's no, there's no judgment. There's no, there's, no, there's no good or bad. There's just learning. Um, and the other, I think the other thing uh, that has been really important to me is just that um, this, this experience of being alone mm -hmm. is an illusion. This is, we, we come here, yeah, and we, 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 have, we have amnesia. We, we, we leave behind all of what we know, all of the, what we know about our past lives, all of what we've learned in the after. We come here and show up with, with none of that. Mm -hmm. And, but not only what we, we come here without that knowledge, but we come here with this profound aloneness. Uh, and, you know, we, we are this little individual body that's beset with struggles and, um, and vulnerability. And, uh, and we forget about, we don't know about all the love that surrounds us. We don't know about our soul group. We don't know that they, they still love us and they're engaged with us and care for us. Um, and, that, and that everyone that we've ever loved is still, in, is still part of, of our existence. All that is forgotten. So I think that those are the things that really matter to me that we, 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 have, we don't live with judgment and all we're doing here is learning and the aloneness is an illusion. We are so connected to everyone we love, and we can and we can learn to pay attention to that by channeling. You can start channeling uh, with loved ones, um, and you can even channel to your own higher self, mm -hmm. the, the part of you that always lives in the uh, in the spirit world that has a lot of knowledge, it knows about your past lives and a lot of things that you've learned over many, many, many uh, lifetimes and experiences. We can, we can actually talk to the part of ourselves that has that higher knowledge and, and channel that. So we are surrounded by love and we don't know it. And that's, okay. that's one of the, the biggest lessons I think Jordan has taught me and to pay attention to that and to be open to that. I have another question. You may not be able to answer this, but you know, people with pets that pass away, pets. Does, was he able to see any pets up there or maybe they go to a different place? You know, he's never told me anything about about that, uh, and I, it's, and it's probably because I've never asked the question. Right. Um, uh, I do know that a lot of mediums see uh, pets uh, uh, connected to souls in the in their in the okay. afterlife, and that a, a medium that we consulted about Jordan could see uh, our our little dachshund uh, that was connected to him. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised right. that there are uh, animals in the afterlife that, that have their own existence. Uh, whether, whether every animal goes to some afterlife or only the ones that we animate with love, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. Oh, I was just curious to see. I, I, I didn't know if you knew or not. Um, um, there's just so interesting. And, and you wrote a book about this stuff, right? About your experiences? Are you writing a book? I well, I wrote a book about uh, it's called Se Seeking Jordan about the story of how I found him and start, started learning from him right. and so forth. And then uh, this book, The Luminous Landscape, The Afterlife, is a, is, is a book that he wanted to write in, to help people with the fear of death. So that's mm -hmm. um, so he he decides what he wants to do. He tells me, okay, now we're going to do this. I go, okay, <laughs> that's uh, whatever you want. I'll be, I'll be fine. Um, so. Um, I mean, he's sort of initiates things. Like I said, he's he's working on this. He also, there's a book that's coming out called uh, "Love in the Time of Impermanence" that he had a lot of input in, uh, and now this one on what the nature of reality is. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, he he decides that he wants to work on this, and then I I'm I'm the dutiful scribe, and and also I I love learning from him and asking questions. And of course, there's other things we communicate too. I, I ask for advice in my personal life and, you know, what do I do about this or that? Um, and um, uh, spiritual help I ask for and 
and so, I mean, he has a lot more that he's telling me than just the books that he's writing, but he, he does right. support me in a lot of ways that really helps me. I, 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 I mean, I don't know how I would have gotten through uh, his death without the sense that, that he's active and uh -huh. loves me and is still very involved in that life. I think that that's been just tremendously protective. And when I work with uh, clients who have had a, a, a terrible loss, one of the things I will often do is teach them to channel so that they can maintain their relationship to that person on the other side and 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 really does mitigate the loss a lot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, it's, it's, this is wonderful for people. Absolutely wonderful because I know there's a lot, of, like you say, there's a lot of fear of what happens, you know, after your loved ones die, you know, are, are they, are, are they going to be around me or, you know, are they angry at me? How's that work? You know, do they take the anger with them? Yeah. You know, does that all get resolved? So the, the, this is true. This, this is great. This is good stuff. And especially, like I said, you're a man of science. So, so you're not, you know, you're not just some fly by night person saying this stuff at all. So um, your experiences are wonderful. I know when my mother passed away, I wanted to do an experiment and I went ahead and I bathed her in a certain scented soap mm -hmm. so I can tell when she's around me. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, you know, she comes around frequently, actually, you know, and uh, just, just, just to visit. So, I mean. Well, yeah. And, you know, somebody I talked to channel who lost her sister, mm -hmm. uh, but her sister always had a certain scent. And so whenever she channels her sister, that scent shows up. Yes. Just what you're describing is just beautiful. It's a beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful knowing. You know, it is beautiful knowing. Yeah. And um, I, I think I think it's great. What's next for you? Um, well, I'm as I said, I'm you know working on this other book with Jordan. I'm I'm actually doing some interesting research you know, as a psychologist on on spiritual practices and their effect on on uh, on our on our psychological life on our, on our emotional life so and, and not just looking at spiritual practices and how they enhance spirituality but do spiritual practices actually impact our psychological and emotional life and so we're, we're starting to to look at that so that, that that's fun for me and it's um, and i also we're doing some research on trauma treatment so yeah i'm i'm there's lots of things i'm looking forward to where can people get your books uh, it, it's there anywhere on, you know, on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, you know, a lot of bookstores carry them. So, uh, yeah, if anybody wants to look for them, uh, seeing Jordan and, and, uh, the luminous landscape, the luminous landscape of the afterlife are available now. And you have a website, right? Yeah, there's a seekingjordan.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. I've learned so much. It's, it's made me feel better. And I'm, and I'm sure, you know, people are going to feel a lot better after, after hearing this. Well, thank you, Charlotte. I really, really appreciate our chance to talk today. It really um, meant a lot to me. All right, sir. Well, you have a good rest of the weekend. And uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. All right. Have a good day. Okay, that was Matthew McKay, and uh, that was pretty enlightening, and I'm real excited about that, really excited about talking to him, and I learned a lot, and I know you learned a lot, so um, I want to thank you, like, thank him profusely for coming, and maybe we can get him back on at some later date, you know, when he has his next book done, and um, okay, anyway, uh, if you like the show, share it with five people, if you hated the show, share it with five people anyway, we're equal opportunity here at California Haunts Radio. And uh, I, we're looking for subscribers for our YouTube channel. So if you can find it in your heart, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, to push the little button down there with the little ghost with the uh, hat and the magnifying glass, that would be great. Oh, good. There, there I am. Not used to Zoom. Um, that would be great because we are looking for subscribers. Uh, usually I have a little ticker running at the bottom of the screen, but not today because we're on Zoom. But uh, we are a nonprofit and all of this stuff you see, the mic and even my little sign back here, you know, uh, comes out of my pocket, the computers, everything, uh, you know, Zoom, usually StreamYard, and, um, uh, you know, the lighting, the mics, whatever, and the equipment for the paranormal group come out of my pocket. And I want to keep these shows coming because I think they're informative and they help people. And that's, that's my job is, is, is I want to help people, you know, either deal with, with the loss of loved ones or, 
or just to, to learn more about the paranormal or even as like a like a lot of people know i'm a journalist a photojournalist uh, in my real life and so this helps me also to bring on some really cool guests you know because it's not only paranormal guests that we have on this show we, we we talk about domestic violence we talk about uh you know current news events and stuff like that so i want to keep those shows coming but like i said it all comes out of my pocket and unfortunately you know i don't have i don't have a bottomless pit for fun so if you guys could help me out a little bit with some donations that, that would be great because i do have to pay you know keep the bills paid and keep these guests coming that would be at paypal.me at california haunts or if you don't like paypal um we also have venmo and it's really easy at venmo you go into venmo and you type in california haunts and we pop right up. So that would be wonderful if you could do that for me. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for coming. Um, please visit our website at CaliforniaHauntsRadio.com. Or if you're interested in our paranormal uh, investigation services, CaliforniaHaunts.org. And uh, you can see uh, you can see and hear some of the evidence that we've gotten over the past 15, 20 years over there as well. But again, I want to thank you guys for coming. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.